All right, welcome to your first screencast lesson for honors geometry. Now, a couple things to note about these. Um, whenever you have a lesson, it's going to have this in the front, and that's going to tell you what section of your book it's from. So this is from Chapter 1, Section 1, or 1.1. And this is going to be covering points, lines, line segments, rays, angles, and triangles. All right, your objectives are not only going to be to um, recognize, but also identify using the proper notation. Points, lines, line segments, rays, angles, and triangles. Okay, so points, point is a commonly is commonly represented by a dot and labeled with a capital letter. So these are all points. Um, if I were to ask you to label it, you would just put the single letter. Okay, that tells you, or you could precede it with the word point. Like that would be point A, you could just call this point B. The the thing is you've got to have that point in the diagram for you to identify it as a point. Um, and we'll get into that in a second here. Okay, lines. Lines are made up of points and are straight. Lines extend infinitely far in both directions, which is shown by the arrows at the end of the line. So if you have arrows on both ends, it's definitely a line. Now here's what I was saying. We can't identify point M on this line because there's no dot. If we had it there like that, then yeah, absolutely we could. But there's no dot on the original, ooh, sorry, on the original line. So we can't say that there's a point M on there. However, when we identify this as a line, we can do that. This is the important part here. When you, I, when you use a proper notation for naming a line, it's got to have this above it. So a, a straight line here with the two arrows on the end. All right, you could also say that this is line M if you ever have to write it out, but I think that most of you are going to want to use the notation. Okay, for this one, you have line BCD. Okay, you can use all three letters to name it if you want. It's not necessary, and there's a bunch of different ways that you can name that, just like in this line. Even though there's only two points on it, you've got this letter off to the side, so you can name that in different ways too. So... I'm going to show you the different ways that you can name it. Okay, this one, for example, we could name that line BC. You could name it line CB. You could name it line CD. You could name it line DC or BD or DB. I think I got all of them there. Um, and the reason for that is because a line extends infinitely in either direction, any two points that are on that line, you can use to name it. Okay? So, if I asked you to name this line one way, any one of these would be correct. For this one, there's three ways you can name it. You could name it line EF, line FE, or just line L, I suppose a fourth way. You could name that line L. You really only want to write it out like that when there's only a single letter to identify it. Okay. Line segments are different than lines because they're made up of points and are straight. Um, that's how they're similar. What sets them apart, though, is they have a definite end and beginning. For example, it's named by its end point. Now, use this notation. So notice there's no arrows on the end. It's just this line without the arrow. So we could call that segment SR or segment RS. So the same rules apply as long as it's on the same segment. You can use any two letters. Like here, this is made up. There's actually two segments here. Okay. You have segment XP or PX and you have segment XQ or QX. Okay. The point is you've got to make sure that you have the proper notation because it can get confusing with lines and line segments. You've got to remember with lines to include those arrows. All right, rays. Little bit trickier, not bad. Like lines and segments, rays are made up of points and are straight. However, they begin at one definite endpoint but extend infinitely far in one direction. So if you see a diagram of a ray, it will look like this. Okay, we would name this ray AB, and this is the only way that we could name this one. Okay, we could name this 
ray x, y, and it's the only way we can name it. Now notice the notation for ray is this and then whatever two letters make up your ray. But whatever the main thing is your first letter has to be the starting point. So for example, I could call ray c, d, I could also call it ray c, e because they both have the same starting point of C, and they're both on the same line. They extend in, you know, it's on the straight line. If E was up here, it wouldn't be the same. Okay. Now, what's not the same, if I said ray CD, ray DE is different. If I said ray CE, and ray DE. They are different because you have C and D as starting points, so it doesn't have the same endpoint or starting point. Also, I couldn't call this one ray YX because that means that would start here and extend infinitely in that direction. So that would be two different rays. So be just be very careful when you're naming these. Okay, now angles. An angle is made up of two rays with a common endpoint. This point is called the vertex of the angle, and the rays are called the sides of the angle. See, these are all different angles. Okay, let's go back to that real quick. Now, there's only one way that you can name this angle, and that's angle three. If you have a number or a letter that's kind of inside the angle there like that, you can name it by that. This one you can name three different ways. You can name it by its vertex, just angle A. So notice that all of these have this notation, that angle notation. You could also call it angle BAC or angle CAB. And the reason why is because A is the vertex for both of these and the order doesn't matter. This one you could only name angle D and that's it. This one gets a little bit tricky because you actually have this is one angle, okay? This is one angle, and this is one angle. So we've got three angles here. We cannot call this angle O because O is a vertex for all three of those angles. So this one we could call angle one, we could call it angle POY, or we could call it angle YOP. This one, we could call angle 2, angle YOR, angle ROY, angle YOX, or angle XOY. Okay, so this one got a little tricky because we have two points on one side of the angle. But remember, an angle is made up of a ray, so it extends infinitely far, so the rules of rays apply. As long as you have, you know, that part of it's OY, OX, OY, those are all, or, sorry, not OY, those are all on the uh, same, <coughs> excuse me, same part of that segment. All right, so now this is actually example one. Anytime you see the word example in there, you definitely need to write that down and understand it. Um, a lot of times it'll already be in there, but look for me to write it in too. So I want you to name the angles in the figure, all the angles. There are three different angles. So pause it here, write out the three angles in your notes and see if they coincide. When you're done, press play again. All right, so your first one could be angle PQS or angle SQP. It's the same angle. The second one would be angle SQR or angle RQS. And the third one would be angle PQR or angle RQP. Okay, you should not have any of these angles as angle Q because all three angles have Q as their vertex. The name of Q would angle Q would not distinguish one of the angles from the other. All right, and last but not least, triangles. A triangle has three segments as its sides as well as three angles, even though the angles will not always be made up of rays because a triangle is made up of three segments. 
A triangle is a union of all three of the segments, and the intersections of any two sides is the vertex of the triangle. So remember that vertex is the point where the two sides of the angle extend from. So an example of a union, which when you see this, that means union. That means you're joining them together. So this kind of U shape means union. Okay, so this should, because they have the same shape, that should be pretty easy to remember. And the other one's intersection, which we'll get into in a split second here. But as long as you can identify union, you should know that the other, the other one is intersection. So the triangle ABC is formed by the union of segment AB, segment BC, and segment CA. The intersection of segment AB and segment BC would be point B. Okay, so point B, which is also the vertex of angle ABC or just angle B, that's the intersection. An intersection of two segments or lines or rays would result in a point. Important to know. And that's it. So hopefully you took good notes. If you have any questions, ask me in class when you see me next.